Tyrannosaurus Rex, the largest, deadliest killer of all time, stomps through the prehistoric jungle, letting out deafening roars, terrifying any creature that could hear it. Right? Well, yes, but actually no. The T-Rex you know may not be entirely accurate to the real thing. Paleontologists are still learning about this gigantic creature, and a lot has changed from when it was featured in Jurassic Park in 1993. So, let's take a look at what Tyrannosaurus might have actually looked, acted, and sounded like in real life. The popular consensus is that Tyrannosaurus rex was the largest, most fearsome carnivore to walk the earth. But that's not entirely accurate. The T-Rex was huge, for sure, and could reach up to 42 feet in length, or 12.8 meters, but it wasn't the biggest carnivorous dinosaur known. The South American predator Giganotosaurus could possibly grow up to 46 feet in length, largest than the biggest Tyrannosaur fossil found. But even bigger was the monstrous Spinosaurus from Africa, growing up to a possible 59 feet long. Bigger isn't always better, however, and Tyrannosaurus may have made up for its smaller, and I say that with air quotes, size with raw strength and power. It's estimated that Tyrannosaurus's bite force could be up to 12,800 pounds, enough to crush a small car. Even though the Tyrannosaurus wasn't the biggest predator in history, it was still formidable to any unlucky animal to cross its path. The Tyrannosaurus is popularly constructed in one of two ways, scaly and reptilian, or covered with a thin layer of feathers. So which was correct? Well, we have fossil evidence of some dinosaurs, such as Microraptor or C. Zeonlong? I, I don't know. Being covered in feathers. But did that trend affect larger predators, such as the Tyrannosaurus? We know that a lack of evidence for feathers doesn't mean they didn't exist, but we do need more of a concrete basis for them in order to assume that T-Rex was feathery. There haven't been any feathery Tyrannosaurus rex fossils uncovered, but they have discovered a feathered dinosaur called Eutyrannus, a smaller dinosaur that was in the Tyrannosaur family and related to Tyrannosaurus. It is, so far, the largest dinosaur found with direct evidence of feathers, reaching up to almost 30 feet long. So by this basis, it definitely is possible that a larger theropod like Tyrannosaurus would have a fabulous feather coating. However, the story doesn't end there. In 2017, scientists examined fossilized skin impressions of Tyrannosaurus and other Tyrannosaurs, such as Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus. The skin impressions showed no sign of feathers, only smooth, scaly skin. So does that mean that the debate is ended, and that T-Rex was scale-covered? Well, more discoveries could change our views, but for now, that seems to be the case. With clear evidence that at least part of the body lacked feathers, and no evidence that there were feathers present at all, it seems safe to assume that the Tyrannosaurus rex was scaled, rather than feathered. Some speculate that the Tyrannosaurus didn't even need insulation feathers to keep it warm, its body mass could do that without help. So did the T-Rex have feathers? For now, we can assume that it probably didn't. If you took one thing away from Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park, it was the menacing, terrifying, and powerful roar of the T-Rex. But did Tyrannosaurus actually roar like that, or is that just pure Hollywood conjecture? For the majority of paleontological history, the sound dinosaurs made was assumed to be something we'd never know. That is, until 2017, when Professor Julia Clark took the sounds of birds and crocodiles both of which are closely related to dinosaurs, and scaled them up to the size of a T-Rex. The result was a low rumbling, almost like a quiet, constant thunder, a terrifying sound to hear in any setting, most of all alone in a dark, rainy jungle. Studies of the inner ear of the dinosaur support this theory by showing that the animal had very sensitive hearing, especially at low frequencies such as this. Such low sounds can travel over vast distances, and could have been helpful if T-Rex hunted in packs, like some evidence suggests. This is all, of course, only a hypothesis, but it's the best guess we have, for now, for what a T-Rex may have sounded like, and it's pretty terrifying. Here's a clip.
One dinosaur stereotype is that they were all stupid, lumbering reptiles with brains the size of walnuts. But using CT scans of the insides of Tyrannosaurus skulls, scientists have found that the dinosaur's brain was surprisingly large. By calculating the animal's brain to body size, we can guess that T. rex may have even been smarter than intelligent mammals such as dogs or cats. There has also been evidence that Tyrannosaurus participated in social activities such as hunting in packs, which also implies intelligence. Does that mean T. rex could be taught tricks? So it turns out T. rex was probably very smart for a reptile and used those brains to become a terrifying hunter. Or did it? We all know that T. rex was one of the most dangerous hunters ever to live, right? Well, maybe not. Paleontologist Jack Horner proposes that the mighty Tyrannosaurus may have actually been a scavenger, like a vulture, feeding off of carcasses that are already dead. Horner says, quote, Picture the Tyrannosaurus rex. He has no arms, can't run fast, appears to have a large olfactory lobe, and he's big. Interestingly enough, if you think about it, one of the best things to be if you are a scavenger is big, so that you can chase away anything else around the carcass." End quote. Horner was a huge proponent of this scavenger T-Rex idea, but other scientists objected, saying that there was nothing to stop Tyrannosaurus from being an active predator, hunting and killing other animals. And the controversy raged on until a paper was penned in 2013 on a damaged hadrosaur tailbone. Inside the tailbone was embedded the tooth of a Tyrannosaurus rex, and the bone around the tooth had evidence of having healed before the animal had died, proving that the hadrosaur had been attacked by a Tyrannosaurus, but had escaped, and lived at least long enough for its tail to heal around the tooth. This is the first clear, direct physical evidence we have for T. rex being a predatory dinosaur, and it seems to put the hunter versus scavenger debate to rest. T. rex may have scavenged dead bodies if it found them, being an opportunistic feeder, but it also relied on hunting and killing its own prey. So there you go. The perception of Tyrannosaurus has changed through the years and will no doubt continue to change, but that's okay, and I honestly can't wait for more crazy new finds that totally change our ideas of what these creatures looked like. Until then, stay tuned here for more of these fact versus fiction videos and weekly looks at dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals, along with any other dinosaur or paleontological content. For now, however, Paleoluke out.